Uh, hello, so it's Michael here, and today I thought I'd do a quick uh, dev talk, uh, as it were. So, I've been working on a building system recently um, that I've certainly faced quite a lot of challenges with, uh, is probably one way to put it. But it sort of relies on a uh, on snap points, and I thought I'd talk a little bit about how it is I actually come to generating all the data I need for those particular snap points. Uh, just because it is quite a daunting task and y there are certain things you can do as a part of your sort of dev cycle to help make that job a little bit easier. Um, so hopefully uh, watching this it might inspire you with, with projects and, and other problems that you might be encountering yourselves and, and possibly be able to create something to help make that a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is show sort of the building system in action just so you can see the snap points doing the thing and then I'll sort of show you sort of all the all the data uh, and how it is I then come to actually generate that data that's that's used. So in terms of the building system you've got uh different pieces uh within the system so many many different components. So whilst it's the easiest option is just to have it all aligned to a grid, that itself is a little bit boring. So from a player perspective no one wants to be able to just build to the grid. So with this particular system you can place objects at any angles that you like and it will automatically know, well I say automatically, it can then quite easily calculate where all the various snap points are so it's not reliant on a grid specifically. Um, which just gives the player a bit more freedom in terms of how it is they want to build uh, with a, with within a building system. So as it gives here with a with a floor mesh, generally you would expect that to be able to snap at you know, all four sides. Uh, and as I mentioned, it, it does it regardless of the angle, and it'll automatically uh, sort of place it where it needs to be. Uh, looking at all the different messages, so we've got like this quarter floor. Um, yet again, it, it does it all based on where it is, and it can find those various snap points. Uh, does it with with all the walls and, and things like that but one of the reasons why I myself certain uh, sort of lean towards snap points is if you can see here the the mesh itself automatically rotates uh, based on the snap point that it's on so this just allows players yet again to very quickly iterate round and and place things where they want them to without having to worry or oh, I need to rotate it now of course with any system like this the meshes are always going to be in some rotations that, that the player might not want but the idea is to take some of that work away from the player to try and make their experience as, as, as smooth as possible so as you can see um, works with all all the meshes um, including the walls so this particular wall it only has one snap one rotation so particularly to a floor but then you can still go in and, and rotate it afterwards. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea in terms of what it is that I've created. Um, so now I'll go ahead and actually show you the, the data uh, that it's using to drive all these snaps. So I have a data table called Snap Groups. Uh, and eventually, when I get around to, to finishing them all, uh, they, this will be full of all the various snap groups. So the meshes themselves, they have a, a socket inside them and then the socket would the socket name would represent one of these uh, within the, the list and that's the snap groups that that particular mesh would would use so if i was to look at the floor full which is the one we're using in, in the example it then lists all the other different base types uh, as it were and within each of these is then a list of transforms so depending on which meshes the player is trying to build with, it will find that in here and then find the offsets that it needs to be able to place it where it where it needs to be. Uh, and as you can see, there's a lot of them, which is kind of what you'd expect with, with a sort of large building system, uh, particularly that's got quite a lot of flexibility uh, within the system itself. So as you can imagine, sitting here manually typing all these out, trying to figure out all, all the different offsets isn't something that anyone in their right mind is, is going to want to do sitting within the sort of the data table itself. 
Um, now the thing with, with some of these is, yes, you could probably calculate these at runtime, um, but that itself sort of runs into problems when you get meshes that aren't as boxy, is probably one way to put it. Uh, in theory, this particular mesh would could work with absolutely any, any sort of mesh because you yourself would be defining where the snap points are. Um, so what I'm going to do now is actually load up the map that I'm currently using to in essence find all the snap points and, and build them and sort of show you a little bit about the blueprint and, and, and how that works. So this is the blueprint. Um, it just looks like a, a grid. So in this instance you would select uh, sort of like the base mesh, so this is what the objects would be snapping to, like the components. So if I was to choose uh, say a wall quarter for example, it would automatically update all the meshes in here. Uh, so let's go back to the, the half one. Uh, so the way the snap points are all defined is using these little dots, which is uh, an instance within the, the, the blueprint itself. But the great thing about them being an instance is these can all be selected and, and moved around, they can be duplicated, uh, rotated, um, all that lovely stuff. Um, so all I would need to do then is go through and place all the dots where I want them and to visualize the actual components there's then a function that can be called within the editor uh, in this instance called create base mesh grid. Uh, could probably do with a slightly better name than that but it will then go through and place all the various meshes uh, at the relevant uh, snap points just to give you a visual representation of what it would look like um, as you can see uh, uh, in front of you. So as a, as a little a little example uh, I'm just going to go ahead and clear all the instances. Uh, the reason we do clear the instances is just to edit a performance. Having to update all this at, at once every time you move something it would get very choppy. So removing them just allows me to move these snap points uh, without it sort of freezing the editor. So I've just moved those three down and if I go ahead and create the base mesh again you can see uh, visually that's what it would then, then look like. So when we go to actually create the base mesh grid it will then create all the data we need to put straight into the data table. So you have the group name, so in this case wall half h, and then all the individual transforms uh, that have been normalized as would be needed uh, in here. So it becomes really simple and straightforward just to copy the group name, pop it in here, although of course I already have an instance in here, and then just again right click on the mesh transforms, copy that, and then you can copy the whole thing straight into there as well. So as you can see already that particular process is fairly straightforward, fairly quick, which is nice. The only bit that takes the time is to actually put all the dots where you need them. But with something like this, is if at any point you do want to make any changes, it's a little bit easier to to wrap your head around and, and make those changes than, yet again, sitting within that uh, sort of data table. Uh, so what I'll do is uh, give you a quick rundown of the actual blueprint itself, just, just in case you're not familiar with running uh, functions within the editor and, and how you could set something like that up yourself uh, to hopefully solve other problems that you might have. So in terms of the actual blueprint on the construction script side of things, which a lot of you might be familiar with already, there isn't actually that much in there. So it sets the static mesh of the base mesh, so that's in this instance the half wall, uh, and sets the material to it and then sets the group snap name based on that mesh. So if I was to come back to here, uh, you can see the group name there as wall half h. If I was to change the base mesh to something else, um, uh, say the quarter, it will then automatically update the group name in there as well. So it sort of just helps prevent you from accidentally calling it something that it shouldn't be. Get again, there's different ways you can do this. Um, f for me, the way I get it is just by removing any underscores from the actual file name and then removing the, the proto at the end. Uh, but again, there's different ways you can do this. So, as I said, the, the construction script is pretty bare 
considering what's what's happening. So most of what happens is actually through um, a function. So when you create a function, there is an option called call in editor. Now this is a, a super handy one. So when you tick that little box, it means that it'll then show up in here as a little button, which you can then click and it then runs whatever the function is. So there are a few caveats you're kind of going to remember when dealing with calling editor functions. So, for example, you can't run functions that have inputs or outputs. Um, it has to be a, a, a self-contained function, so no inputs or outputs. So if I was to go ahead and open up the create base mesh, this is where everything sort of starts. It starts off by clearing all the other previous component instances and things like that. That's just to make sure you don't end up with thousands of instances that shouldn't be, aren't needed anymore and, and things like that. Um, there's then another function here that then gets creates all the, the specific transforms that are needed from uh, the marker instance. So if we come back in here, there's the marker instance here, which is just a, a ball with a material on it, um, and then some post-processing outline material just to make it visible regardless of where you are. So with because it's all in the same blueprint, we can then get all the, the specific instances. So we see we'll get the instance count, loop through, get all the transforms, do a bit of uh, manipulation here. So this this here is just making sure that all the numbers are whole numbers as best as possible. Just because as you're moving them around, you, you get things might get off by like I don't know, slightly by one, one or two points because of floating point errors and all that. Uh, so that just helps mitigate that, and then it populates the transforms array. So going back out of there, we then have. Uh, another function. So this gets assets by path. Now this is the first time I've actually used this particular node uh, and it's quite useful. So you specify a path uh, and it gets you all the asset data. So in this instance what it's doing is it's getting every single asset that is in this folder. So that's all of these meshes. Which is super handy for me because it means I don't have to manually go in putting all these into a, an array or, or, or anything like that, it can just fetch them all and it pops them into a, a, an array which can then be used somewhere else. Uh, so at this point we then start doing some loops, uh, this is to create the grids using sort of the size of the, the mesh array to determine that. Um, what we then do is create actually add the base mesh in, so creating the the grid, so that's all the, in this instance, all the wall halves. Uh, so that creates the grid, which is, as you can see. Uh, once it's done all that, we then come into the create instance comp from asset data. So this function gets the asset data. So when we get the asset, it returns the, the object. We can then cast that to a static mesh, and then we get actually get the static mesh data which we can then use um, to set the static mesh of a, an instance mesh component. So once we've done all that, it then sticks it in an array so we can then use that uh, the next step. So once it's done all that and created all those, we can then come in and start adding all the components from those dot markers. So and that what it does then is just loops through the transforms, does some additional checks as it loops through, uh, trying to find the sort of the closest uh, instance to uh, the marker so it can do what it needs to do uh, and then it just has the instance. Uh, as a part of that it then populates that uh, mesh transform so this is yet again sort of just manipulating that data to how it is we need it to be uh, in the data table and it creates that as well. Um, so all in one fell swoop. So as you can imagine trying to do all this on the construction script would, yeah, it just isn't the best of ideas because it just lag out the um, the editor. But because we c we do have that option to call an editor, um, it just helps make things run a little bit a little bit smoother. So, for example, if you know, coming back to this one, if I was to go ahead and create it, it probably 
pauses for about a second, which when you're expecting something to happen isn't too bad. But if I was to try and do that whilst dragging objects around, waiting a second each time, it's, it's, that in itself is going to get quite tedious. Um, so yeah, so this is kind of like a bit of an overview in terms of something that I've created to help solve one of my problems within the editor to create that data and, and, and make it a little bit easier. Um, so obviously if you're trying to create data yourself where you're needing it, you know, just think, you know, is there anywhere, is there anywhere, is there another way that you could be creating that data that isn't you manually sitting there banging your head against the keyboard wondering, you know, is it worth it? Um, so yeah, so hopefully you found this um, bit of a dev talk uh, helpful. Um, let me know what you think. Um, is there any problems that you've had where you've done something similar? You know, if you, you know, create something to solve a problem, share. You know, let everybody else know how it is your, what it is you're doing and hopefully you can give other people some ideas to, on how they can possibly solve their problems as well. So yeah, so thanks for, thanks for watching and uh, take care.